All right, everyone, it's time for the occult video 198 on black metal occultism. Now, mostly I'm going to fixate on the, the non-reality of occultism within <laughs> most of black metal. Uh, black metal is filled with references to like Satan, Lord of the Rings, uh, mysticism in general. Uh, you know, a lot of fictional sort of franchises, especially with uh, relation to like the sword and sorcery side of things. Certainly H.P. Lovecraft, uh, his sort of mythos uh, figures heavily as well. So you have a lot of different occult overlaps. Now, it's not like there isn't a root of occultism, real, authentic, historical paganism within within uh, Lovecraft. There absolutely is, especially with some of the, the early wave archaeology, the Sumerian, Babylonian sort of stuff is spooky. You certainly get that in Lord of the Rings. It's based loosely, at least, on the Icelandic sort of poetic sagas there. Um, definitely in the most literal form. Literally, Gandalf and, and Balfour and all these others are literally mentioned there. So it's just that Gandalf is a cane elf. So he's like a little elvish dude sort of wizard. He's not even like a human or an Ainur or whatever like, like that. That's just an adaptation. But it's authentic paganism. Like it was literally believed in at the time. It's ancient. Uh, what I would say, though, is generally speaking within black metal, that's all a floor show. It's sort of like within the Church of Satan. The Church of Satan says, Hail Satan, you know, our father the devil and stuff. That's all a mock-up of Catholicism. It's meant to shock. It's also meant to create sort of an illusion for your enemies to attack. And it's a marketing strategy at the same time. It's brilliant sort of marketing. The marketing is, hey, we don't want the masses. This is spooky stuff. You, you Most of you can't handle it. We're the intellectual elite. And so what they try to do is, is they market it as though it's really hard to get in. It's like, hey, you know, here's the application. You can say, what are your talents? Uh, <laughs> how famous are you? And stuff like that. And it's like, you can, you're going to get your card. It's not like they're actually going to decline your $200. Unless you're a total fucking loser. Uh, you're not going to get declined. They want the money, but they want you to feel like you're empowering yourself. It's a marketing strategy. LeVay was very good at it. Meanwhile, though, there's no devil that they believe in. Their rituals or mock-ups. The same is true within black metal. Most of these bands that sit up on stage with bloody skulls and pentagrams and saying, oh, you know, Satan will rip the shroud of the virgin apart and ravish her upon the body of Christ and, you know, very flowery theatrical stuff like that. Most of it is, is entertainment. It's music. It's fucking entertainment. Now, then you get some of it that's more authentic. Like, I know Varg, who's no longer making black metal, he makes sort of more atmospheric works and neo-pagan works. He's, he's a pagan. He was more into, I, I think, the literal sort of, you know, devilish side. And then he became more of a, an enlightened pagan. You have others that are similar. But I have a feeling that most black metal artists, outside of some of the pagan uh, works, uh, they're really, ultimately, they're atheists. They don't really care. <laughs> they care about their paycheck, not about Satan. They're not trying to please the devil or anything like that. Some of them definitely are. There are actual devil worshippers in black metal, like in the literal sense. Uh, both on the paganized side and on the, the atheistic side, but also the, the what you would consider the, the odd theistic Christian side, oddly enough. Inverted Christianity, like saying, hey, I literally believe in the Bible, I just worship the other guy. He, he sounds better than Jesus and fucking God and stuff like this. You even have an element of anti-Islamic sort of devilishness as well. There are some uh, bands that are theistic in their beliefs. They believe in Allah, but, but consider it evil. You can look up uh, anti-Islamic black metal, and you'll see there are bands, including from places like Iran and Iraq, oddly enough, where they can get killed for doing this, that have made music, and some of it's, you know, some of it's more on the edgy side, some of it's better than others. Uh, I can't remember several of the band names, but I have listened to quite a few of them. And uh, in full disclosure, it's been a number of years since I've really been interested in black metal. Um, the black metal scene has become a, a little bit overfilled with people who are recycling the same sort of bullshit. And the same old bands. It's like uh, Bardock. Good band. Uh, but, you know, with the, with the exception of a few things that they've done recently for a while there, they weren't really listenable. Uh, it was, it was too refined, uh, <laughs> almost too up-tempo, too upbeat, actually. Too obsessed with war and not enough of that original, like, blasphemy that made it more edgy and entertaining to begin with. They've, they've partially solved that problem in the wake of, like, Souls for Belial, I think. Uh, but I'm more into, like, gothic rock, which, by the way, overlaps more with Christianity than it does with Satanism. A lot of people think goths are satanic or something. It's more of the goths are, are just depressed Christians than anything else. Depressed Christians, uh, Orthodox Jews in some cases, uh, or, or atheists that don't give a fuck. 
basically that is, oh, God's real. God's also pretty evil, and this depresses me. Uh, let's talk about our impending mortality. I, I actually like that. I know it can be some sort of edgy mall goth sort of stuff, but it's pretty funny. Um, as far as black metal goes, though, I, I see more of a pagan vein than an occult vein as far as, like, theistic devil worship. Uh, but magic is definitely practiced, at least within a, a mock ritual setting. It's common. Not only common, it's basically, hey, you have to, you, why did you cast the circle before your performance, even if they don't believe in the spirits or demon or whatever? Uh, it doesn't really matter. It's a floor show, and it is entertaining, and definitely magic can be entertaining. This is why illusionism is so common. That's about all. Peace out.